The following video is sponsored by 3D Realms. All right, y'all, I got a really cool one to put on your radar here today. Now, Phantom Fury, I first found out about when I was at PAX East. I saw it, but I never got a chance to play it. I've been playing it for the last few days now, and I gotta say, I've really been enjoying my time with it. This is a Half-Life inspired first person shooter. And in all honesty, I've played very little Half-Life in my lifetime. Uh, the way I played it was through the orange box on the Xbox 360, and I played very little of it during that time because I was doing what I called the GameStop hack, where I'd buy used games from them, test things out, see if I like things, and if I didn't, or I wasn't really gelling with it, or I didn't finish it in time, I would return it to GameStop and tell them the game didn't work, get full trading credit back, and buy something else. I was horrible, but you know what? GameStop is worse, so I win at the end of the day. Nonetheless, never really played much Half-Life, never finished Half-Life, so this was kind of new to me. I was really intrigued when the offer came by because of the art style, you know how I love that pixel art texture work, and then of course, first person person shooter with immersive sim elements as someone who loves games like Dishonored and Bethesda Game Studios titles. This really spoke to Maddie's taste. So I want to go ahead and give it a whirl, see how it was, especially because the demo that came out for Phantom Fury wasn't super well received. So I was curious to see, as I saw on Reddit and on social media, the improvements were being made and people were noticing them, if it actually played that way and I could relay that information to you and maybe put an indie gem on the radar for you in the meantime. So is that what happened? Well, it's time to go ahead and find out. The game is available right now on PC. If you're interested in learning more, I'll have a link in the description down below. Anyway, let's get the story stuff out of the way. You play as Shelly Bombshell Harrison, and you journey around the United States of America, killing things from mutants to soldiers while trying to save humanity. It's not really a story game at all. It just serves as a vehicle to some of the insane weapons you're going to get. Like, you'll be able to dual-wield machine pistols, grenade launchers. You'll find a machine gun turret, a, a laser turret. You'll get abilities for your bionic arm at the same time though it doesn't feel like this game that's designed to make you be completely superhuman i guess i would define it as it plays and reminds me a lot of half-life as i talked about earlier and i think that's because of the way the shooting works like it's all through the crosshairs no real ads for the most part but half-life to me was always about the weaponry and the interaction particularly the environmental interaction and boy does this game have a lot of it except the difference here is that phantom fear is very over the top violent like think of the bloody mess perk from fallout where you just shoot someone and they blow up to bits you get that here and that reminded me also a bit of the old school doom games which many people don't know about me but i love og doom love 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 i've replayed that game so many times so anytime i see a first person shooter like that it really just scratches an itch that i forgot i had so phantom fury does that it doesn't play like other first person shooters but i think it's to the game's advantage it feels like an early 2000s game in the best ways and in one way in particular i think the worst way would be environmental navigation i did get lost multiple times in this game i did get confused multiple times in this game on where exactly i was going like i couldn't find the right key or i didn't notice an object that i could interact with like i'm talking even right out the opening level i was a little bit confused but yet that's kind of what gives the game its old school feel you'll get your objective and you just kind of have to figure it out like however you want to do that whether it's finding a key or using boxes and stacking them to go over an object or punching a train and kind of maneuvering these trains to create platforms for yourself to get over a fence like there's a lot of really cool moments in phantom fury where they just leave it up to your creativity so while this will be a drawback i think to some for me i think it leads to shining a light on the game's biggest strengths depending on your taste so another thing that was really interesting to me about this game is when i was reading online about it before playing is that a lot of people were unsure sure after the demo apparently they put out a demo and it didn't really lead to great impressions but as someone playing now who never experienced the demo and seeing how it is now I have to say that improvements definitely had to have been made number one it controls better I read online that people thought it felt pretty floaty I thought it was much much more responsive than anything written online and from what I experienced played really great it shoots well like guns have really good kick to them the shotgun in particular is my favorite to use I mean again if you've played the old school doom style games like when you pull out that shotgun it has the good kick to it the good punching sound effect you see them blow it a bit and you move on to the next enemy really satisfying stuff so it controls well shoots well AI is more responsive like they'll actually shoot at you they'll actually run at you they'll take cover there are sometimes it's a bit wonky like I'm not 
not going to give it the complete free pass on that. There's times it's not perfect, but most times I don't think people will notice just because they'll throw a lot of enemies your way. It's typically in those quieter moments where you're running down a hallway and you take out one and then another and then another that things can get a little wonky there, but nothing that absolutely destabilized the experience. I just want to make sure I'm not giving you the idea of pure perfection. It's a complete thousand percent bounce back. Like there's a few wonky things about it. Again, I think as someone who's looking at it from the angle of, hey, this is designed to be a love letter to the older FPS games. It has elements of those from its art to its gameplay. I'm not saying the AI is deliberately not perfect, but I think for some people it may add to that charm and remind them of a time bygone. Again, not trying to oversell it, but just to make sure you're plenty aware. What I loved most about this game for sure were the interactive environments. You already know I come from a Bethesda Game Studios background, if you will. I went to the University of Bethesda Game Studios. And so I love when I can pick up objects in the game. What it does for me is it gets me looking at every surface in the world. Everything has something of value. Sometimes it's just a binder. Sometimes I click a button and the laptop turns on. I like that sort of stuff in my games. It just brings the world to life. Like objects aren't there as static decorations and nothing more. It's why I've had trouble in the past where people really celebrate games like The Witcher 3, which I think is phenomenal. But to me, it's environments lack so much interaction that I prefer the jankier ones that give me more interaction because it brings the world to life to me instead of just through its characters, it's the objects too. And so Phantom Fury has that Bethesda Game Studios energy I enjoy. What do I mean by that? Uh, let's take reading terminals in the world, for example. Like in Fallout, I love finding a little terminal, combing through someone's emails, being really snoopy, that kind of thing, right? And you can do that here in Phantom Fury. Now, I mentioned earlier that the story isn't really the highlight. So the world building may not sync with you as much. But for me, I just love that it's there. I love clicking through the logs. This is where you can get even like passcodes to unlock hidden doors that have certain traps treasures that you're looking for like there are nanite cores for example and this is what you're going to use to level up we'll talk about that in just a moment but i think the exploration while simplistic is rewarding enough and i enjoyed going through the game and reading these logs and so that kind of element there adds a lot to it for me and especially the immersive sim stuff like being able to pick up boxes and, and run at an enemy use it as cover or pick up an explosive barrel throw it into a fight and then use that to detonate it and take out a bunch of enemies and save on ammo. That's what this game, I think, has as a big strength. I really, again, enjoy those sort of elements, but I can understand why some people would not fully gravitate toward that. But for me, it's beautiful. Now, I mentioned earlier, you're going to find these hidden rooms, and sometimes it'll be through like little clever platforming challenges. Sometimes it'll be through using the environment to your advantage or blowing things up, that kind of thing. And then you'll find these nanite cores I mentioned earlier, and that's where you can upgrade your bionic arm. You can upgrade your weapons using these cores so you can melee a bit quicker because there's a cooldown on that. You can add a taser to your pistol, or you can turn it into a burst fire. Like Each weapon has multiple modes. You can turn your grenade basically into a cluster bomb. You can add a flashlight to your shotgun and all of these weapons and, and trust me there are many of them they all have their own upgrades and variations so works works really really well like i was surprised how much the game gave back for how cheap it is wanted to throw this in here i think for many people this will be kind of what they were hoping i think it was duke nukem forever was gonna be right where it's this retro style first person shooter and and a lot of people had hopes for that game that naturally crashed and burned i wasn't totally into the youtube zeitgeist at that point in time so i just remember the reviews for that game being particularly low but this game may scratch that itch as well if you're looking for one of those retro shooters it may fill that gap in there especially for the price tag it's a pretty easy ask in my opinion but yeah, from gameplay style to art style, it speaks to a lot of my sensibilities, clearly. So I may be a touch biased. I'll admit that I like these sorts of games. Like when I look at the pixel art art style, I'm a big believer that's the future. And I say that because I feel as we push more and more into fidelity, that's cool and all. I think fidelity has its place, but I think we're going to hit this uncanny valley place at some point where games are going to mimic real life maybe a little too much and people are going to want the more retro style things. And I think games like Phantom Fury get that. And I also think we just need more games that do it how it used to be done is how I would put it. So I really enjoyed my time with Phantom Fury. I do recommend giving it a look, checking out some other reviews out there. As I've always said with my impression style videos, 
don't let them always be the de facto review only video you should always take in multiple opinions see what other people are saying and that way you get like the full perspective of what this game offers so that's what i think of phantom fury thanks again to 3d realms for sponsoring today's video i hope you all enjoyed are you picking up phantom fury let me know down below again link in the description if you want to learn more about phantom fury you can go ahead and click that you can help your boy out in the meantime totally appreciate it but nonetheless thank you for stopping by and i'll catch you in the next video stay sexy stay active i love you all peace